Right now, it's time for our introductory keynote presented by Ana Delgado, a water specialist and consultant for the World Bank. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ana Delgado. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Ana Delgado, and I'm a water specialist uh, working at the World Bank. Uh, and today I will be presenting the Water and Circular Economy and Resilience, or WISER, framework. Good. So first, I will shortly describe what is circular economy and how does it apply to the water sector. I will present the Water and Circular Economy and Resilience Framework that we have developed at the World Bank. And I will then talk about the uh, wiser activities that we're doing in our organization. The current water crisis is one of the greatest challenges of our time, with increasing demand and pollution, while at the same time water is undervalued. And of course, climate change is having an impact on our natural resources with more floods and longer droughts. Circular economy has emerged as a response to the current and sustainable linear model of take finite resources, make, consume, waste and pollute. There are several, several definitions, but the most used is the one by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is based in three principles. One, regenerate natural systems. Two, design out waste and pollution. And three, keep products and materials in use. From the text here, I just wanted to emphasize that circular economy is not a synonym of recycling, as some people think. It goes way beyond that. It means the coupling economic activity from environmental degradation, eliminating waste through superior design of processes, restoring and regenerating ecosystems, and in summary, building economic, natural, and social capital. Although circular economy is still mainly applied in other sectors, such as manufacturing, the interest in the water sector is growing, and several institutions and publications address the relationship between water and circular economy. Here, I have included some of them, uh, you can check the source if you're interested to learn more about it. We must shift from the current linear system in the water sector to a circular system. This that you see here is the water and circular economy and resilience framework. And the purpose was to establish a common understanding of circular economy principles and resilience in the urban water sector and to have a clear framework for us, the World Bank, when supporting countries implement those principles. Um, as you can see here in the outer green layer, uh, you can see the three main outcomes that we want to achieve, which are of course related to the sustainable development goals. Uh, one, deliver resilient and inclusive services. Two, design out waste and pollution. And three, preserve and regenerate natural systems. For us, circularity is not the goal per se, but the means to these uh, three outcomes. And then in the inner blue layers, uh, you can find the uh, nine actions needed to achieve. The first uh, action um, to achieve the three outcomes is that we need to plan and invest for climate and non-climate uncertainties. For example, as we've seen recently with the, with the COVID pandemic, it's not only climate change that we need to, to plan for. 
we also need to maximize the use of existing infra infrastructure, uh, for example, by performing audits to identify bottlenecks in treatment processes and ensure that plants run at their maximum real capacity. Um, it makes no sense, for example, reuse wastewater if our wastewater treatment plants are not working properly to start with. Uh, we need to diversify water supply sources, including in the portfolio sources with different risks and cost profiles and with low vulnerability to shocks and stresses. Uh, we think that the reuse of wastewater and other unconventional sources must be part of the urban water balance. And also we need to protect those water supply sources and we need to include integrated water storage um, as part of the solution. Uh, we should uh, also recover resources from water uh, and reuse them in the form of treated wastewater, fertilizers, energy, and also, as we are seeing in this conference, increasingly other valuable materials can also be recovered from the water cycle. Here you can see some examples of resources that can be recovered from the water cycle, uh, from fertilizers, uh, to recover cellulose from uh, treated wastewater, uh, generate energy with biogas, beer with reclaimed water. And these are just some examples, but every day there are more innovations and more things that can be recovered throughout the water cycle. Uh, we also must op optimize operations, uh, for example, by reducing non-revenue non water, which is very high in, in many of the countries that we operate. Because energy is often the costless component of water supply and sanitation operating costs, energy efficiency and renewable energy serve both to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases and strengthen the financial performance of the utility. Energy is the largest controllable operational expenditure for most water supply and wastewater utilities. So making these utilities more efficient or even transforming them into energy producers of renewable sources are some of the best ways to manage and reduce operational costs, hedge against fluctuations in energy prices, ensure long-term operational sustainability, and increase the resilience of water systems. These benefits can be achieved while curtailing waste, curbing greenhouse gas emissions, and advancing climate goals. Here, I wanted to show some examples that uh, go beyond uh, capturing and using biogas in wastewater treatment plants. Uh, so as you can see here, um, in Tunkery Recycled Water Treatment Plant in Australia, first of all, treated wastewater is reused to irrigate a golf course and other green areas. So they're already doing that uh, from the recovery side. And they have also installed solar panels in their roofs as part of their climate strategy and are expecting to reduce energy costs by $60,000 per year. Another example is the University of Cape Town, uh, which in collaboration with the Water Resource Commission have implemented, have implemented solar, floating solar panels in a wastewater treatment plant and they are assessing the effect of water in reducing floating PV panel temperatures and therefore increase their efficiency and that of the panels themselves in reducing water evaporation. We also, finally, we also need to restore degraded land and watersheds, actively manage and recharge groundwater and also include groundwater as part of the, the water sources and the water balance. Um, and incorporate natural-based solutions. Here again, I wanted to visually show some examples from the case that I think we all know of the sponge cities in China to upstream reforestation to reduce treatment costs or constructed wetlands as part of the wastewater treatment system. And also the use of green roofs uh, to reduce flooding, and finally, recovering degraded watersheds and land, for example, by using uh, the biosolids. 
There are also key cross-cutting issues that are important factors in the successful adoption of the WISER framework, and these are also documented in our report, but I'll mention them here. Um, and it's to it's very important to manage water demand. We need to also focus on reducing the use uh, of water in all sectors. Um, we need to leverage the power of this digitalization. And here in this conference, we've also um, you're also hearing all about this. Um, and we need to create the right policy, institutional and regulatory environment to promote circular, uh, circular solutions. And finally, we also need to ensure that solutions are inclusive. Uh, through the case studies uh, and our projects that have also informed this framework, we have seen that circular economy principles make economic and financial sense when designed properly. For example, investments in nature-based solutions such as upstream reforestation can reduce treatment needs and costs, or also selling treated wastewater to industry can generate an additional revenue stream for the utility. So it's not only env environmental benefits that we can reap from circular economy um, projects, but also financial. Uh, so how is the World Bank working with clients to promote a wiser approach? Um, first of all, we're documenting relevant case studies to showcase best practices around the world, not only in developed countries, and you can find them uh, in this in these websites uh, showed here in this slide. We're also promoting circular economy principles through policy dialogues in different countries like the ones uh, highlighted here. And we're supporting governments include circular economy principles in, the, in their water projects, in their water sector. Um, for example, uh, Chennai has implemented several projects and investments to diversify water supply and to become more circular and resilient to droughts. And as part of this effort, the, the utility, the municipal utility has been implementing several projects to treat and reuse wastewater for several purposes. Under the Tamil Nadu Sustainable Urban Development Project, the World Bank supported Chennai in designing and financing a tertiary treatment plant to treat wastewater and sell it to industrial end users. With the additional revenues uh, of selling the treated wastewater, the utility can cover all operating and maintenance costs. And the capital investment in the reuse project has been recovered in less than five years. The city is now considering indirect potable reuse and has requested support from the World Bank to do so. Um, and the utility is also implementing other circular economy activities. Uh, for example, it has retrofitted seven of its wastewater treatment plants to recover energy from wastewater and to supply more than 50% of the energy needs uh, of all their treatment plants, saving on energy costs and helping sustain operations financially. Uh, we're also supporting other governments to implement circular economy principles in the water sector, and these are just some examples of, uh, of projects. We have also developed an online quick assessment tool to familiarize the user with the wiser concept, help assess if the project system or city is wiser, and finally present solutions, guidelines, and resources related to this issue. So please check the tool. You can go to the link show, showed here, www.wiser-tool.com, and you can try it for, it's very simple. It has only nine questions, and at the end, you get a very visual uh, result, like shown here um, in your own email a personalized page that you can go back to whenever you want. And it will provide you links to all the resources and guidelines that we have compiled to help you achieve uh, the action that you want. Uh, here I show again our websites, uh, the Wiser website link and Waste to Resource um, link. These are the two main initiatives focused on, on circular economy and resilience. Uh, please check them to find out our main publications and other materials. 
Um, and in the, as I said, in the main Wiser report, you can find the, frame, the Wiser framework explained in detail with examples and case studies. Uh, finally, I want to apologize for not being present today. Um, but if you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, here you can see my email. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity, and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. And our thanks to you, Ana Delgado, for joining us virtually this year. It's truly a pleasure to have you with us for the 2023 Blue Planet Berlin Water Dialogues. Thanks so much for that informative and inspiring keynote.